It says, sometimes you never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. I want you to think about that. Sometimes you, you, you don't know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. We're living at a very special time. If you can hear me, this is the best day of your life. This is the best day of your life. I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. So I know some stuff. I've seen some stuff. I've gone through some stuff. And, and I want to share with you how to maximize that. That, that there, there are moments in life. This is the time you need to make your move. This is the time you want to first work on your mind. Because everything comes out of the mind. Don't, don't focus on your bills and, and all the other stuff that's been going on in your life right now. I want you to pull your life back. I want you to pull your mind back. I want you to focus on and I want you to feel and I want you to visualize seeing yourself drama free and living life on your terms. My desire to want to be the best in the moment now requires me to prepare. For me, you will only win tomorrow if you start today, right? There's no other way to win tomorrow. You don't win tomorrow by thinking about tomorrow. You win tomorrow by starting today. Your alarm clock on your phone doesn't wake you up because you wake up and set an alarm. You set an alarm the night before. Plans are the same. So much of our life today is good and bad, happy and sad. We have good days, bad days. We have days we feel motivated. We have days that we feel unmotivated. We have days that we feel excited and elated and everything's going our way. And we have days where everything's going wrong. We have a day where we close every deal and every phone call opens up a new opportunity. And we have a day that no one's calling us, no one's messaging us back. And we're wondering what's going on. When things are going good, that's when you work harder. And that drive and that ambition to learn is what gives us confidence. Any fear that you experience is because we're not learning. The number one reason we age is that we stop learning. Are you getting better every single day? That's the question. At the end of every day, you look yourself in the mirror and you ask yourself, did I get better today? If the answer is yes, and you do that for five years, how much better are you going to be? Attitude is a reflection, a result of a person's will. It is incalculably powerful. It can bring about marvelous results for us, but we need to train it patiently, day by day. Now let's talk about the attitudes of people who are successful. The top 5% of the people who go sailing through life from one success to another and who even when they fail at something, shrug it off and head right out again. No matter who the person is or what he does, men and women in sales, business executives, people in all the professions, wives and mothers, students, top people in the armed forces, public servants, men and women in the service of religion, working men and women in all fields of endeavor. Wherever you find a person doing an outstanding job and getting outstanding results, you will find a person with the right kind of attitude. These people take the attitude toward themselves that they can accomplish what they set out to accomplish, that there's no good reason on earth why they can't be competent, successful. They have a healthy attitude toward themselves and, as a result, toward life and the things they want to accomplish. And because of this, they achieve some remarkable things, and they come to be called successful, outstanding, brilliant, lucky, and a lot of other things. They're quite frequently no more brilliant or outstanding than the majority of the people by whom they're surrounded. But they did develop the right attitude, and they found their accomplishments not too difficult, and many times surprisingly easy, simply because it seems that so few are really trying, really believe in themselves. Successful people come in all shapes and sizes and in widely varying degrees of intelligence, background, and so on. But they all have one thing in common. They expect more good out of life than bad. They expect to succeed more than they fail. If you want something worthwhile, take the attitude that there are a lot more reasons why you can have it than there are that you cannot and set out to earn it. Go after it. Work at it. Ask for it. And nine times out of ten, you'll get it. Our environment is really a mirror of our mental attitude. 
If we don't like our environment, we have to change our attitude first. Success goes to those who refuse to quit. Success is a game of attrition. It's hard. You're going to fail. You're going to embarrass yourself. You're going to do dumb things. And when that happens, most people just stop. Many of you have lost your competitive edge. Get your competitive edge back. Act like you playing basketball. Act like you playing football. Go on that dog on classroom. Compete. You're not giving 120. You're giving 70. You're giving 60. You're giving 50. And you walk with these people who've given sweat, who's given blood, who's given tears. You walk what they pay for and it ain't free. You've got to understand it's not about what you were born with. It's not about what you were given, where you started, or even where you're going. It is entirely about what you plant at the center of your soul, how hard you're willing to go after something, how much focus you're willing to put in your life, and how often you come back to that level of intensity for who you want to be. One day you'll look back on your life and appreciate the struggle and have nothing but gratitude for everything that happened along the way. If you want your life to change, here's the source of it all. Ideas plus inspiration. The good news is, ideas are not that far away. I've got an excellent phrase for you to consider, one that will serve you well for the rest of your life. Everything you need is within reach. The ideas you need for life change or business change are within listening reach. They're within reading reach. In fact, there's probably a library not too far from you. The problem is, most people pass by libraries. Very few walk in. Andrew Carnegie set up all these libraries across the country thinking everybody would stop in. But no, almost everybody drives right on by. Do you know how many people own a library card in the United States? 3%. And guess how much they cost? Nothing. The ideas are within reach. But here's the key question. Who is going to reach? There's a simple biblical phrase that says, if you seek, you will find. But it's very important to know that finding is reserved for the seekers. We don't find what we need. We find what we search for. If you will search, if you'll try, if you'll go, if you'll listen, ideas are within reach. And ideas are life-changing. There's nothing so powerful as an idea whose time has come. A business idea, a social idea, an investment idea, a good health idea. All you need is a specific idea to make an impact on your life. Ideas can help you gather treasure, gather equity, and gather wealth. 10 years from now, you can be right where you are now, or you can be in a new place. The difference between now and then could be significant in terms of money, lifestyle, treasure, and equity. In 10 years, you can enjoy an Incredible life if right here and now you make a small change in your thinking to start you on the journey. The key is to start right now gathering the ideas and making the changes that will take you further along this new road. Ideas can change your life and sometimes all you need is just one more good idea in a series of good ideas. It's like dialing the numbers of a combination lock. After you've dialed five or six numbers, the lock may not come open but you probably don't need five or six more numbers. Maybe you need just one more number, one more idea. Maybe a seminar or a sermon can provide it. The lyrics from a song could do it. The dialogue from a movie could do it. Conversation with a friend might do it. If you keep your eyes and ears open, you'll find that one last idea you need. Once you find that idea, the lock comes open and there's the door for you to walk through. Just one more idea, no matter where you get it, may be all you need to open that door of opportunity. If, however, the lock still doesn't open, you may be lacking in inspiration. Who knows why some people are inspired and some are not? Some people find a great idea and turn it down. Some people say that it costs too much. Some people say that it's gonna take too much time. Some people are too busy. There are a lot of different reasons why some people are inspired to take advantage of a good idea while others pass it up. I call it mysteries of the mind, and I just leave it at that. There are some things I don't try to figure out. Some people buy and some don't. Some go for it and some don't. Some change and some don't. And if you've been around for a while, 
you can usually spot those who don't take advantage of a good idea. A man asks me, how come all this stuff goes wrong for me? I say, I don't know. The most I've been able to figure out is that those kinds of things always happen to people like you. I'll bet he's one of the ones who don't take advantage of good ideas. If he continues on that path, he'll probably never find the right combination. That honor will always fall on the ones who do, like you. If you do what other successful people do over and over again, nothing can stop you from eventually enjoying the same rewards that they do. But if you don't do what successful people do, nothing can help you. Success is not an accident. Sadly, failure is not an accident either. You succeed when you do what other successful people do over and over until these behaviors become a habit. Likewise, you fail if you don't do what successful people do. In either case, nature is neutral. Nature does not take sides. Nature doesn't care. What happens to you is simply a matter of law. The law of cause and effect. You can look at yourself as a machine with a default mechanism. Your default mechanism is the almost irresistible attraction of the expediency factor. In the absence of self-discipline, your default mechanism goes off automatically. This is the main cause of underachievement and the failure to realize your true potential. When you are not working deliberately, consciously, and continuously to do B, and have those things that constitute success for you, your default mechanism is at work. You end up doing those fun, easy, and low-value things in the short term that lead to frustration, financial worries, and failure in the long term. One of the most important requirements for success, once you have decided what it is that you want, is the quality of willingness. Successful people are willing to pay the price, whatever it is and for as long as it takes, until they achieve the results they desire. Everyone wants to be successful. Everyone wants to be healthy, happy, thin and rich. But most people are not willing to pay the price. Occasionally they may be willing to pay the price, but they are not willing to pay the whole price. They always hold back. They always have some excuse or rationalization for not disciplining themselves to do everything that they need to do to achieve their goal. How can you tell when you have paid the full price of success? It's simple. Look around you. There it is. You can always tell how much of the price of success you have paid by looking at your current lifestyle and your bank account. By the law of correspondence, your outer world will, like a mirror, always reflect the person you are and the price you have paid on the inside. There is an interesting point about the price of success. It must always be paid in full and in advance. Success, however you define it, is not like a restaurant where you pay after you have enjoyed your meal. Instead, it is like a cafeteria where you can choose whatever you want, but you must pay for it before you eat it. Motivational speaker Zig Ziglar says, the elevator to success is out of order, but the stairs are always open. The second most important success principle after self-discipline is that you must learn from the experts. You will never live long enough to learn it all for yourself. If you want to be successful, your first job is to learn what you need to learn in order to achieve the success you desire. Learn from the experts, read their books, listen to their audio programs, attend their seminars, write to them or approach them directly and ask them for advice. Sometimes one idea is all you need to change the direction of your life. There is an even more important reason for you to practice the self-discipline that leads onward and upward to the great successes that are possible for you. The practice of self-discipline enables you to change your character, to become a stronger and better person. The exercise of self-discipline has a powerful effect on your mind and emotions, developing you into a different person from the one that you would have been without self-discipline. Imagine yourself in a chemistry lab. You mix a series of chemicals in a Petri dish and put it over a Bunsen burner. The Bunsen burner heats the chemicals to the point at which they crystallize and become hardened. But once you have crystallized these chemicals using intense heat, they cannot be transformed back into liquid form. In the same way, your personality begins like a liquid, soft, fluid, and formless. But as you apply the heat 
of self-discipline as you exert yourself to do what is hard and necessary rather than what is fun and easy, your personality crystallizes and hardens at a higher level as well. The greatest benefit you enjoy from exerting self-discipline in the pursuit of your goals is that you become a different person. You become stronger and more resolute. You develop greater self, control and determination. You actually shape and strengthen your personality and transform yourself into a better person. The rule is that to become someone that you have never been before, you must do something that you have never done before. This means that to develop a superior character, you must exert ever higher levels of self-discipline and self, mastery on yourself. You must do the things that average people don't like to do. Another success principle is that to achieve something that you have never achieved before, you must learn and practice qualities and skills that you have never had before. By practicing self-discipline, you become a new person. You become better, stronger, and more clearly defined. You develop higher levels of self-esteem, self-respect, and personal pride. You move yourself up the ladder of human evolution and become a person of higher character and resolve. The wonderful thing about the achievement of success is that every step in that direction is rewarding in itself. Each step you take toward becoming a better person and accomplishing more than you ever have before makes you feel happier, more confident, and more fulfilled. You've heard it said that nothing succeeds like success. What this means is that the greatest reward of success is not the money you make, but rather the excellent person you become in the process of striving towards success and exerting self-discipline every time it is required.